Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today I'm going to show you how to make a lithium ion flight pack out of 18650 batteries. For my Nano Talon, I wanted a 3S2P Lion pack at 5000 milliamp hours, so I'm, that's what I'm going to build today. There's a lot of different ways you can do this, but what we'll focus on today is the concept of series and parallel, and once you kind of understand the arrangement and how that all works, then you can build whatever format you want. So in my case, I want a 3S2P 5000. You'll also notice before I get started that these batteries look like they've been used. I mocked them up with my spot welder and did a test build just to make sure everything worked the way I anticipated it to before I did the video, and it did, so I tore everything apart, and now I'm going to show you the correct way to do it. Before I get into the process on how to do this, let's talk about the equipment you'll need. You'll need some form of spot welder. I got this on Amazon, and I'll have links for all of this in the description, so don't worry about that. But you'll need some form of spot welder. You can get these on Amazon or Banggood. They're all over the place. The only thing I'd recommend is just do a little reading, make sure they work. Just do a little testing off the battery. Use your nickel strips, put them on a piece of wood, and do some practice spot welds to make sure you get your power level on whatever spot welder you get set correctly before you start working on the battery. So you need some kind of spot welder. Obviously, you'll need the batteries to suit your configuration. You'll need some kind of main lead to connect your pack to your airplane. These should always be balanced, so get a balance lead. I have a 3S balance extension. Mine's already cut to size, so I don't have to worry about that, but make sure you get a balance extension. Nickel metal strips, and you gotta do your homework here to understand the amount of current you anticipate out of your pack to make sure you get nickel metal strips that are thick enough to support your desired current. There are charts out there available on the internet. That's outside the scope of this video. Just make sure you do your homework and get the right thickness and width. I'll be using what's called fish paper underneath the heat shrink. This goes on the ends of the battery and it gives it a nice clean finished look and it also helps prevent corrosion. Of course the heat shrink, the way I figured out the size for my heat shrink is I measured the circumference of my shape and then I cut it in half and that's the flat width for the heat shrink. I also recommend some kind of jig. I have a little 3D part that I printed for mine but use some kind of jig because when you're spot welding these you don't want to try and hold the battery, the nickel strip, the spot welder pens. It's just better to have a jig to help you out with this. I'd highly recommend that. And then last up are insulating tabs, and I also really recommend these. I bought these on Amazon, but you can also 3D print them. You just need something to separate the positive terminal from the battery itself because the casing is ground. And when I started testing with mine initially, I got sparks a couple of times, even though the heat shrink on the battery is intact. So definitely get some insulation and put those over the top before you spot weld on the positive terminals. All right, let's get started. For me, the easiest way to think about wiring on these batteries is to think about what I want to have happen in series first. So in series, what you're doing is you're connecting the positive to the negative. So I want a 3S battery because I want it to be about 12 volts. And in order to get a 3S battery, that means three cells. So I'm going to take three cells and connect them in series. I have these cells set as storage voltage of 3.8 volts per cell. At my fully charged rate of 4.15 volts per cell, I'll get 12.5 volts pack voltage when these are fully charged. I like to start with my series connections first because that's really easy to understand. We're going to take the negative lead on one battery and connect it to the positive lead of the next one, and then we're going to repeat that process. We'll take the negative lead of the, ne the second battery and connect it to the positive lead of the last one. That's a series connection, so that to me is very easy to understand, and that's where I'll start. The adhesive rings that I got are adhesive back, so once you get them on there, they should stay in place for you while you're doing your work. On this spot welder, I found that a setting of 45E yields a good spot weld on these batteries. Okay, so there's my first connection, negative to positive. Now I'll flip the pack over and do negative to positive again.
All right, this is how you make a 3S pack. So we have three batteries in series right now, and I'll just connect my leads to the positive and negative side, and we'll take a measurement. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen. Since I stored these batteries at 3.88 volts per cell, I expect to see 11.64 on the voltage. So 11.67, that's 3.88 times 3. Okay, so that's a 3S pack. Now we just need to make another 3S pack, because remember, I'm setting up for a 3S 2P. All right, let's check the voltage of the second series pack. 11.66, okay. So now we have our two 3S packs. The trick now is to connect them in parallel. We'll arrange these in the little jig, and this will be our positive terminal. So I'll connect a strip across the two positive leads. And now the negative leads. And now the final set of positive leads again. Okay, that takes care of one end. We just need to flip it over now and do the same thing on the other side. My jig was getting in the way of the strip, so I had to get rid of the jig. I'll have to come up with a different design but it did the job to help me get me started. I just wrapped some tape around them to hold them steady. So now on this side, we're creating the negative terminal. This will be the negative lead for the pack. Okay, there we go. There's our series and parallel connections. If you have any concerns about the current carrying capacity of your cells, you can add another strip in your series connection. So if you're worried about that, I'll show you just how to double up your strip that will give you double the current carrying capacity of a 1.5 mil strip. So we just double up, that's it. And there you go, by doubling up on the series strips, we've doubled the current carrying capacity of this pack. All right, the next thing we'll do is attach the main lead. So I'll get started by tinning the center area of this positive pole, which is where I want my main lead connection to reside. And by putting the solder off to the side here, you don't put it directly on the battery. So you still wanna be quick about it, but not putting it directly on the battery will help preserve the battery. Okay, you can't really monkey fist this because that's a nickel strip. So if you pull real hard, you can damage a strip and I don't really want to do that. But I can see that I've got a good solder connection there. So we'll move on now to the negative terminal. I'm going to line my wires up. Now it's time to start thinking ahead and lining your wires up so that when you put your shrink wrap on, you can get an effective covering without too much fussing around with the wires. Okay, that looks sturdy, so I've got my main lead connected. Next up is to connect the balance leads. And I found the easiest way for me to do this is to start with the positive lead first and work my way all the way to the end. So the positive lead goes on the positive pole. That's an easy one. All right, I've got my balance lead connected and I'll walk through those solder points with you real quick. The first wire goes to the positive pole of the battery. So you see I've got my main wire here. The first red wire goes on that lead. 
the second balance connection goes on the opposite side of the positive one, so all the way over here. So this is the second lead, and you can see that's connected right there next to the red wire. Okay, so the second lead goes right there, and then the third lead goes back on the top right here on the last battery between the two positive connections, and then the fourth lead goes on the negative main. Before we shrink wrap this, let's make sure our electrical connections are right. So I've got a little test lead made up here. I've got uh, alligator leads connected to a two pin header. So I'll take my positive lead of my voltmeter and put it on the positive terminal, negative on the negative terminal. And then I'll take the positive lead for my header and connect it to the positive lead on the balance plug. And we're looking for 3.88 volts. And we've got that. So that's cell number one, 3.88. We'll move over now to cell number two. We should also see 3.88, and we do. And now cell number three, we should also see 3.88, and we do. Okay, that's a three cell pack. The last thing we'll do is just check the voltage, make sure we don't see anything unusual on the voltage. We should see 11.64, I think, 66. All right, that's a three cell pack. The next thing to do is cover it. All right, I've cut a couple of pieces of my fish paper and I just cut it so I could use the natural curve of the paper to go along with the arc on the battery. So one piece will go there and one piece will go there. There we go, there's a 3S2P 5000 milliamp hour lithium ion pack that's designed for my nano talon that'll fit right in there. The battery leads come out on the correct side. A little bit of fish paper and some shrink tubing to finish the job. I'd say it looks pretty good. I got a few little wrinkles that'll annoy me. <laughs> Maybe I'll try and work on them a little bit more. Well, there you go. Now you know how to make a flight pack for your airplane. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like this kind of content, it's very important that you hit that subscribe button and a notification bell so you know when new material hits the channel. Check out the description for affiliate links on the parts that I use to make this battery pack. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy.